Hey, Steve Mignone here, doing the uh, the living room crawl, junkyard crawl. Have to wait because today it's uh, January in Massachusetts, cold, snowy. The bone yards are covered with snow, so we're indoors right now. And this is the story of discs, disc breaks, and record discs. Uh, this is the Beach Boys album Little Deuce Coop. This was released on October 7th of 1963, and it was a classic. 409 is on here. Uh, just a lot of great music, you know. I mean, for me, Pet Sounds was the Beach Boys' best album. The only thing I really would want to hear from them a lot. But this is good stuff. It was sort of bubblegummy, but still a great album. But also classic in the world of hot rodding because of the vehicle on the cover. That is Clarence Cataldo's uh, car of 19, or built in Dearborn, Michigan. Now here's the thing, this album came out again on October 7th, 1963. Classic stuff, Little Deuce Coop. The album talks about a, a flathead V8 and all that kind of stuff. Well, not so fast. The reality is that that photograph was actually part of a photo shoot done in late or early 1961 by Hot Rod Magazine's Eric Rickman. And here it is. This car is on the cover. We even see the same guy with the red jacket. And that's probably Clarence Cataldo, that fella right there. So it's kind of weird that two years later, the Beach Boys utilized the same car on their album after Hot Rod had it on their cover. Now the thing of it is, too, while the Beach Boys talked about a, uh, a flathead V8, this car had an Oldsmobile V8, so it wasn't even flathead power, but with that said, it was a deuce coupe. It was cool. Uh, but one thing that's kind of controversial about this, really, is if we look really close on the cover, we'll see a certain German military symbol on the supercharger drive up top. Um, you know, most people didn't even see it, but there it was. And uh, some people did see it. And the thing of it is that for the, I think, December, yeah, December 61 issue of Hot Rod Magazine right here, uh, it was such a deal that the owner of the car wrote in. And here is his response, that sort of circled part there. And what it says, <clears throat> this is from Clarence Catalo of Dearborn, Michigan. Uh, Dear Mr. Green, who would be the editor of Hot Rod Magazine, Mr. Green, I feel a letter of explanation is due regarding the swastika on my blower pulley on the July cover of Hot Rod. I was amazed to learn from you that people have been writing in making an issue out of my little emblem. I would like to start out by quoting a definition of the swastika from the dictionary. Quote, a figure used as a symbol or an ornament in the old world and in America since prehistoric times, a lucky symbol or omen, it has been discovered on tombs in the vicinity of Troy, in ancient Persia and India, in China and Japan, it has been found on both India and Buddhistic inscriptions, it has been discovered in Corinthian coins, on carved rocks in Sweden, and on Celtic stones in Britain. It has been found among the American Indians who use it as extensively uh, as a decorative design. Recently, the symbol or emblem of the Nazi uh, Germ government in Germany. Um, so anyway, end quote. That was the dictionary. So Catalo continues, I don't know if these people writing in are fanatics, grabbing at a chance to get their name in print, or people actually offended, but if it is the latter, I would like them to know it was it has absolute no political significance and was put there purely as an ornament. I'm not looking for publicity, so I have since removed the ornament from my blower pulley, Clarence Catalo, Detroit, or Dearborn, Michigan. So, you know, kind of an... Uh, a controversy of sorts, you know. I mean, my book, it's just, it's a symbol, whatever, let's move beyond it. But something else that's kind of interesting about this car is the fact that it has Kinmont disc brakes. That's the other side of our, our disc, beyond the record disc. And Kinmont disc brakes were actually something of a sensation back in the day. This is September of 1953, a full decade before the uh, brakes and the little disc group appeared on the um, Beach Boys album and uh, about eight years before they appeared on the cover of Hot Rod. Right here we can see that is a Kinmont disc brake right there on this little hot rod right here. And Kinmont disc brakes are actually very similar to the Chrysler Osco Lambert safety brake. In fact, those were used between 1949 and 1954 on full-size Chrysler's. Here's a picture here, an exploded view of the uh, Osco Lambert safety brake. And what they basically are, it's a rotating disc inside of an aluminum and iron housing 
balls in ramps or a hydraulic cylinder, depending on which design, would then cause the uh, friction plates to squeeze against the spinning disc. And basically it was a disc brake, it was enclosed, but the Osco Lambert and the Kinmont were some of the first disc brake designs. Now keep in mind that uh, in the Kinmont brake, only 325 sets of four were made, and when they were new they were sold for 125 bucks in the early 1950s. So by the time the uh, early 60s came around, to see Kinmont brakes on the front of the Beach Boys Little Deuce Coupe, those puppies right there, uh, was pretty cool. It's a retro piece in 63. And a lot of folks confuse these with Buick's aluminum drum brakes, whole different animal. Uh, and this German thing kind of brings us around to another, another symbol, and I'm kind of a rock and roll enthusiast. This is Blue Oyster Cult's 1974 album uh, called uh, Secret Treaties, and we can see here plainly an ME262. This is the Messerschmitt, uh, the world's first operational jet fighter. Yes, World War II, and yes, the, the Germans used them, the enemy, so to speak. Uh, but here it is being used on the cover of a Blue Oyster Cult album. Now, of course, we might remember Blue Oyster Cult a few years later later, like in 77, 78, they really hit it big with uh, songs like uh, Don't Fear the Reaper, Godzilla, and in your early 80s, Burning for You, you know, great stuff. But again, early on, their third album, 1974, uh, this one here, Secret Treaties, has the ME262. Now, it's not just a fluke that's on the cover, it's also on the back. <laughs> we see it right here. And there's even a song, it is song number uh, four on side one called ME262. So somehow those New York rockers, Blue Oyster Cult, were tuned into the, the mystique of the Messerschmitt ME262, which despite the political thing, was a, an amazing hot rod. I mean, it was the first twin engine jet fighter in operation. And uh, of course the Brits had the Gloucester, and of course uh, we had, uh, well, the Sabre jet which came along. There's also some, some jets we had here in this country as well, but they weren't fully operational. Germans had those things in the air as early as 1944. Pretty crazy stuff. Glad they didn't get them any further than they did, things worked out well in the end, at least uh, when it comes to uh, uh, the air war. Well, that's the story of discs in record discs and disc brakes. Uh, kind of a stretch, but hey, you know, a lot of history, a lot of fun to be had by connecting the dots in the realm of hot riding and, and music history, but we're more about cars here. Now, we're not in the junkyard today because, again, it's uh, January, it's Massachusetts, and the junkyards are covered with snow. So for the time being, we'll have to mess around indoors. Uh, but we'll be back in a boneyard soon enough, and of course, also doing muscle car crawls with the folks at High Octane Classics in Auburn, Massachusetts. And and we'll be in my garage soon as well, uh, messing around my 62 Dark Police car. So if you like these things, be sure to subscribe to the Steve Magnanti YouTube channel.